Hi, I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building in Columbia, Missouri. I want to welcome you back to the Build Show. Today we are at what, are, what we're calling our Blackberry Rental Number no. 2. So this is one of a pair of projects that we're doing for the same client. And this house is a rental. And today we're going to discuss the foundation details here. Um, it wouldn't peg us as somebody that would be hired to build a, a rental property because when you think rental property, you're thinking uh, value engineering, you're thinking getting things done as cheaply as possible to maximize your investment. However, the people that own this rental, they are the second generation owners of this property and the rentals around it, and their goal is to have this property in the family for possibly another 100 years. And they have another house next door that actually is the mirror image of this house that was built a couple years ago and they were having comfort complaints from their renters. So I wanna walk you through our foundation detail and explain how we're taking care of one of those comfort complaints so that in the future they have a more durable, more comfortable building to rent to their clients. So let's go take a look. So when we talk about a slab on grade home in our market, there are a couple things that we have to keep in mind. First, our soil allows us to trench and use that trench as the form boards for our footing. So we'll have an excavator come through, they'll take a tracked scoop, and then that scoop is actually what we pour the concrete into. There's no getting down in the pit to do form work or anything like that. All that concrete is earth contact from the second it's poured. Uh, it also means that we don't have to disturb as much of the soil around it, which is nice because we don't have to worry about the same level of backfill. It's one of the things that makes a slab on great home more cost effective for the masses. In, in the traditional turn down slab is what we call that, the next step is setting up form boards around the perimeter of the footing after they've dried, backfill with some gravel on the inside to get rid of and cover the uh, organic material that might remain there and then pour a slab on top of it, four inch concrete slab. Uh, it's pretty standard assembly in our market. I would say that you know, 99.9% .9 of slab homes in our market are built in that exact same way. The difficulty with that is when you have that concrete slab come over, turn down and tie to the ground, that concrete will be exposed due to code. There's six inches of exposed concrete there before you get to soil. So that means that our slab that you're gonna walk on or live on, uh, is thermally coupled to the outside. So if we were to look at one of the neighboring houses here, I can see concrete that's less than eight inches from where you're gonna put your foot. And four weeks ago, we experienced negative nine temperatures here in Missouri. There is absolutely no way that that concrete floor is comfortable at negative nine degrees. And one of the goals of our, our us building houses is control of our environment, that separation between outside and inside. That's why we put insulation in the walls. But for some reason, our market and most markets in the United States build an uninsulated turn down slab assembly. So what we've done here to mitigate that is we poured that trench footing and then our concrete guys poured a curb basically around the perimeter that was formed with two by tens it's four inches wide and then on the inside of that curb we added an inch and a half of xps foam on the vertical and then on the flat at the four inch point moving down we added a two inch xps and that allows us to have an insulation on the horizontal an insulation underneath we're now insulated from the ground, so we're thermally uncoupled from the ground, and we're now insulated from the perimeter, which means we're thermally uncoupled from the exterior air, or therefore exterior temperatures or snow or whatever it is that's up against it. And this is one of those complaints that the, the clients have had about the house next door, is that you get close to the perimeter of the wall, that floor gets really cold. Now, it is still gonna be a concrete floor. So the emissivity of that concrete floor, if you think of that concrete as like a stone countertop, if you put a, your hand on a stone countertop in a comfortable home, it still feels colder than the wood that the countertop's sitting on top of. That's the way that it emits the, uh, the temperature back to you. So we can't completely solve that issue, but what we can do is warm that concrete floor with these two pieces of insulation to within a couple of degrees of what the thermostat is reading. 
So if you have your thermostat set at 70, my prediction is that this floor would probably be 68 degrees or, or 67 degrees if it was nice and cold outside. Uh, this is one of those simple things. It didn't take much effort. All it took was a little bit of the, the concrete guy and I working out our methods and operating together for one goal. And now we have a thermally uncoupled concrete slab, finished concrete floor that will be substantially warmer than any traditional turndown slab. Thanks for watching. Don't, don't forget to uh, check me out on Instagram and we'll see you next week on The Build Show.